right, we have got the match that we've been waiting for since the French Open. So soon we get a rematch of Novak Djokovic and Carlitos Alcaraz, this time on the grass. And I'm going to tell you why in this video that Novak Djokovic will beat Carlos Alcaraz on Sunday to win his 24th major, 8th Wimbledon, and he'll just make history again. I'm going to break it down why I have that prediction. I'm going to preview the matchup, what each guy's got to do right to give themselves the best chance to win because Carlos does have a very good chance to win. And I'm going to talk about the semifinal performances of these guys and how they got there. So let's get into it. Here's the slice. Welcome to the show. Okay, people, are you excited? I cannot wait for Sunday's final. It's the two best players in the world. I think that's pretty clear right now playing again. And this time, not in the semifinals of the French Open. This time in the finals. And this time, we're all praying. We're all praying that Carlos Alcaraz's team can get him the proper hydration and can figure out a way for him to not cramp because we got ripped off in the French Open uh, semifinals. We had two great sets, and then the match was over when Carlos started cramping. So we need to have him healthy. We need to have Djokovic healthy, and we need to see both the best players on earth go at it on grass, be creative. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. It's going to be so good. So thanks for being here. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button because that helps out the show and it makes you a better tennis player. Try it out and let me know if it's true in the comment sections below. I appreciate you being here. I also appreciate our sponsors. Cool bet. Stay cool. Bet responsibly. We've got the odds for the match, the big match on Sunday. Coming in at 1.55 for Novak Djokovic, 2.6 for Alcaraz. Almost three times your money. Closer to three times than two times your money for Alcaraz to win. Is he that much of an underdog, in your opinion? I was super wrong. Uh, Medvedev versus Alcaraz, which we'll talk about, but that's interesting. Shout out to AG1. The best way to get your daily nutrition started in the morning. You can drink your AG1 and it tastes pretty good. It makes you feel great. Try it out. Link below. And shout out to Go Sport. Secure the bag. The best tennis bag in the game by far. Links below. So, we've got it set up. We've got it set up. It's one of those matches that before it happens, I said that I'm pretty sure I said the same thing before their French Open semifinal. I just feel like we're we're as tennis fans, we're just lucky to be able to watch this. I cannot wait. I'm excited to see how creative either guy both guys are going to be on the grass. I think there's going to be more creativity there than on the clay. Um, I'm just excited to see how they serve and return. Who can you know dominate the baseline better? Who's going to come forward more? Who? How are they going to play off of each other at the net? I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. Have I said I'm excited? Have you guys caught that? Anyways, so my prediction, the title of this video is why Novak Djokovic will beat Carlos Alcaraz to win his 24th major. And we're going to get into those reasons. I've gotten them written down. But before we do that, no purple this time. Let's get into the way that these guys both got here. So I'm going to pull it up. Yeah. Alcaraz Medvedev. Let's start there. Alcaraz beats Medvedev 6-3, 6-3, 6-3. And now I said that Medvedev's got a great chance. I don't think he's that much of an underdog. Uh, And from if you watch that match, it looks like I'm an idiot and I was wrong. And I probably was wrong. I think Carlos was on this surface uh, at a serious advantage going into the match. Um, I was interested to see how this serve return would work. Um, but after watching Medvedev stand super far back on the return, not be able to change it, he did try certain parts. Um, but it's just seeming like on the on a quick surface like this, Medvedev uh, against a player who's as aggressive as Carlos and as versatile, it's just standing that far back is not going to give him a great chance to win. He basically has to serve perfectly and then have his opponent not play his best on a, on a slower hard court. That's different, I think. But uh, even still against Carlos Alcaraz, it's just the ability for him to play um, how big he hits it. The reason I think the reason Medvedev had success against Djokovic like that is because Djokovic doesn't 
isn't as aggressive as Carlos and he isn't as powerful on the forehand side uh, from the baseline. So Medvedev was able to kind of slow ball him and work his way back into the point. But with Alcaraz, he's just too aggressive when he's, when he's playing good like he did today. It's just, yeah, you're just at a disadvantage the entire match. And it looked like that for Medvedev. But great tournament from him, like he talked about afterwards. Uh, but yeah, if we're just looking at the stats, um, this is crazy. Second serve points won for the match. Medvedev only won 30% of his second serve points. So that's crazy. Think about it. Carlos is winning 70% of the points when Medvedev's serving on his second serve. So that's going to be a big key uh, against Djokovic on Sunday. Um, first serve in for Medvedev, only 59%, uh, but he still only won 70% of those, which he's got a huge serve, great serve. And Alcaraz, again, returned amazingly. Everyone's got, people can say, even Medvedev said that he didn't serve his best, but the returner makes a big difference on that, obviously. And he only got five aces. Um, that's probably about more about the serving. Um, but yeah, in general, Alcaraz just showed his ability to return and be uh, reactive and anticipate and pick the ball clean and read how the ball bounces off the grass. He's looking, feeling very, very comfortable on the surface. And that's obviously been the case because he won Queens, but now he's made the final Wimbledon and he's really backed it up. He's really backed it up. So Alcaraz looks great going in to the final uh, uh, based on that per performance against Medvedev and then also against Runa in the quarterfinals. Absolutely wiped them both. So that was big. That's big for Alcaraz. Djokovic versus Sinner. Novak Djokovic, 11 aces, zero double faults. Uh, first serve in, 58%. Only won 75% of them. So in reality, this was a close match. This was the frustrating thing about this match for, I don't know, people watching. I think it could have been, maybe should have been a better match than it was. It was close, except for the big moments that mattered. Anytime that it seemed like Sinner had a break point or a big point, he had a few set points in the third, um, I believe. And, you know, anytime he had a big shot to hit, he just literally almost shanked it. Zero for six break points won. Yeah, just can't happen. You just have to play better in the big moments. And he played a good match, but like a terrible match in the big moments. And that's disappointing because a lot of people are questioning his clutch ability now. Um, you know, afterwards he said he felt like he was closer in this match than he did last year, which is kind of just, you won two sets last year. Tennis is about, it's not about playing at a good level. It's about winning the sets and about capitalizing on opportunities. It's about the scoreboard. So he won two sets last year. That's a big deal. You only had to win one more. Not only it's against Novak Djokovic it might be the hardest thing ever to do in tennis. But, yeah, centers he's in an interesting place. Um, anyways, it was a good result for him to get here uh, to the semifinals at Wimbledon. That's a big result. That's going to help his ranking. Um, but, yeah, it didn't seem that close to me today, really, because to be close, you have to, like, get on the scoreboard. You have to win a set, at least one set, for it to be a close match. And the first two sets, he got behind early in both of them, and he wasn't able to get back. Um, so, so. It ends up looking like Djokovic kind of just wiped the court with them. Literally wiped the court. So that's that. That's how we have the final. So now, what do we do from here? We've got Novak Djokovic, the stallion of Wimbledon, the, the seven-time champion on these courts versus the most exciting player to come through tennis since Novak Djokovic himself. Maybe even more. He's got more hype at a younger age. Um, so what are we going to see? What are we going to see? I went back and watched the highlights from their match in Madrid where Carlos beat him, Carlos beat Djokovic. And then their match at the French open where obviously Djokovic won, but it was kind of over after two sets due to the cramping. And a lot of the points on the clay was, you know, the first mover, whoever took the first punch, more so in the Madrid match, Carlos was super aggressive, changing direction on the ball right away. So going up the line with his backhand um, or cross court, but just hitting super aggressively to put immediately get Djokovic on the back foot and just making Djokovic having to defend all night. Uh, from what I remember in, you know, from the French Open, it seemed like they're fairly even ebbing and flowing with who was going to be attacking and who's going to be aggressive, very creative. And that was good. Now, 
I think on the grass, you know, you just can't defend as well on the grass. So you don't have as much time. Um, and it's not supposed to be wet on Sunday at Wimbledon. The forecast right now is for warm temperatures and slight windy as well. So if the ball is kicking, the, the bounce is respected more. I wonder who that helps. In my head, that I think that helps Alcaraz more. Gets him more spin on his ball. Gets him more pop on his shots. Um, so we'll see if that holds up. But I really think a big key in this match is going to be the first mover advantage. Whoever can, whoever is able to get on top of the rally first and take, make the aggressive move, I think is going to be winning most of those points. And it's going to be back and forth because both guys can do that so well. Both guys can defend off their second serve. Both guys can hit amazing returns. Both guys can change direction on the balls seemingly at will, forehand and backhand. Although... Alcaraz not as easily on the forehand as Djokovic can. So it's just going to be interesting to see. I just, like I said, like the huge theme of the match is Djokovic has been here before way more than Alcaraz has. We saw that the French part of cramping is new is hydration. Part of cramping is nerves for sure. It's mental. So Alcaraz was very nervous in that first set there. He didn't look settled in that set and he lost it. And then he won the second set. And in my opinion, he was, I think with the way he played in the second set there, I thought he had the advantage going forward, and I believe he would have won that match against Djokovic in the semifinal of, of the French Open. But you just you, it's you, that's the biggest the biggest reason that I'm leaning Novak Djokovic in this match is that jo well I've got it written down here. Let's just compare it. We've got experience, Nole, thirty five finals, Carlos two. 23 major titles won, one for Carlos. So the experience isn't even close. This is only his second, Carlos's second final. And the first final he played was against Casper Root, which it's kind of like his, his like age group. He's not really as nerve wracking. So this is Wimbledon center court against Novak Djokovic, who's going for history. Maybe the fact that he's actually playing a match with history will put more for more history he's already the leading grand slam major winner uh on the men's and so we'll see we'll just see where the nerves are at with these guys um yeah basically the reason i'm leasing leaning novak djokovic is because of the experience factor he's been here before so many times and not just winning majors he's played on grass so much more so you're going to see an absolute master of the surface playing a guy who's really kind of perfected his craft this year, like three weeks ago on grass. So I just think Djokovic is going to be able to draw Alcaraz into deeper waters than he's ever played against on, or than he's ever played on grass. Alcaraz is not, he's played, he's beaten Medvedev. Who's not comfortable on grass. He's beaten Runa. Who's not comfortable on grass. He had a harder time with Berrettini and um, uh, I can't forget the, uh, the, the Nicholas Yari. So it's going to be interesting to see. Neither of Runa or Medvedev are comfortable on the grass, and Djokovic is the epitome of comfortable on the grass. So I just think that Alcaraz is going to be see angles and timing and sneak attacks that he hasn't seen from anyone else, and he's going to have to react so well, and there's just going to be more pressure on Alcaraz the entire match because Djokovic just knows everything about this. So in order for Alcaraz to win, he's going to have to play his best. He's going to have to be super aggressive, and it's going to have to pay off for him. And he's just going to have to take his chances, unlike Sinner did. Uh, and for Met, and for Djokovic to win, he's going to have to serve well, I think. Uh, he's going to have to be able to rely on that. Uh, it definitely, at least he's going to have to serve really well in three of the sets if it goes five, because uh, that's how I think he's going to really keep pressure on, on Alcaraz and win those sets. He's going to get a break and then run ahead. Um, you know, with the crowd, we saw the Djokovic crowd uh, interactions. Uh <laughs> in the match today against center. So, you know, with Alcaraz, he can pump up the crowd almost like no one else. So is, you know, if I think if Djokovic is getting broken after breaking, like the momentum swings are not going to be good for him. Um, but again, like I said, he's a way more experienced player at this level on this court, on this surface. And that's why I'm predicting Novak Djokovic to win in five sets. I think it will be a war. I'm kind of just speaking that into existence as well. But I just really want to see an amazing match um, on Sunday for the men's final between the two best players on the planet, bar none. We've got the age. We've got the experience versus the youth and the fire. Djokovic says, we're both hungry, so let's have a feast. 
And I agree, Nole. Let's have a feast. I can't wait for the final. Let me know your thoughts on the match below. And thank you for subscribing, clicking all the links below. And follow me on Twitter at the Slice Steven uh, for my live updates on the women's final tomorrow and the men's final on Sunday. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks for being here.